Hi everyone, then I'm Thomas Russell from Pixologic uh, and today I will continue my uh, series of uh, ZBrush Live in relationship with uh, what we could say, uh, oh sorry, a <laughs> very hard time tonight, uh, cosplay, sorry, and Star Wars. Um, as you may know, I did in the past uh, this Kylo Ren helmet uh, project uh, with uh, then ZBrush during my ZBrush Live, uh, which was a very long project. The idea, of course, was to do the helmet and 3D print it um, and bring it to Los Angeles since I'm based in France for ZBrush Summit. Uh, um, then let me just copy past the link. This is on my, my uh, website uh, where I have a kind of making of and of course you have uh, obviously all the videos that I did. Um, then I'm explaining the world workflow with 3D scan and uh, after of course in the brush why quickly clean the scan, working with the template to be sure to, I, I had the good scale and fitting my head like I explained in the videos. And of course, with the brush, the modeling and sculpting, which was mainly the Z modeler and uh, other functions like panel loops. Um, no panel loops, sorry. Um, uh, yes, no, it was panel loops, sorry. Uh, of course, adding all the details and uh, everything else. And then, of course, at the end, uh, really working on the shapes and how I will split everything to be able at the end to combine as uh, a single helmet and I had to think a lot about all the pieces and uh, what you see here is the final helmet uh, of course uh, inside of the brush I had to build the grid and everything and of course after some quick uh, uh, explode view and then I experiment for the 3D printing I explained that the issues I have with the FDM printing process uh, which was very annoying and problematic for this kind of shape because it was very big but thin parts and the, the managing the support was a real pain and of course uh, I know some solutions but I, I expected a lot of issues with this printing process that's why I switched to SLA printing with the form 2 um, and I printed everything and I'm explaining all of that uh, in on my website uh, sorry, this is my clunky English. <laughs> then uh, you may find some mistakes and typo. And uh, I explain a little bit about, uh, of course, about gluing all the parts using some putty like here, just to fill the gap and sanding, and and all this part. And of course, a bit about the painting process. Uh, and this is a, a final helmet on my head just before leaving for Los Angeles and the helmet in Los Angeles on my head uh, and during the EA Motif presentation it was just on the table uh, and then I'm speaking about the cost and all this kind of thing. Then today um, I'll switch to uh, the uh, the next part of this project, uh, which is um, the lightsaber. Um, yes, I'm a kind of Star Wars nerd. There is people who are more nerder, I don't know if you can say that, um, but I really love Star Wars, I have Star Wars stuff everywhere, my sons love Star Wars as well, uh, and then yes, it was a natural next step. Um, of course, I can buy my, uh, uh, I can buy uh, a lightsaber, you have very nice props available uh, at different price, uh, prices, uh, but Obviously, since I can skirt, I can print, let's build my own one. Um, then just before starting with the brush, uh, <laughs> yes, more like I, yeah, I switch back to English. Uh, oh, sorry, just, just about a few words. Yes, I'm doing live stream in French as well. And um, I may try to do French live stream on a regular basis, perhaps twice a month but not at the same time. I will keep these slots uh, of the Sunday uh, uh, afternoon or evening, depending on where you're located in English and probably in the middle of the week doing something in French. I don't know yet, but uh, I should keep this spot uh, and slot, sorry, uh, in, uh, in English. Anyway, um, yeah, just before starting inside of the brush, I have uh, another uh, link I would like to share with you um, on... Uh, on YouTube, um, which is a, a, a video from, oops, sorry, uh, from Bob from I Like To Make Stuff, which is a channel about this guy, Bob, is building a lot of different things uh, from uh, 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 tables, uh, tool stuff, 
uh, a lot of things like uh, uh, arcade games, uh, a lot of things, and of course he built a, a lightsaber. And I won't work on. I mean, I won't use his video for the, the creation part by itself, but. This guy is very good about mixing stuff and combining uh, 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 parts uh, like electronics items and he's explaining a lot of things about how to do the lighting part of um, the lightsaber because I don't want to build only the hilt but I want to build uh, um, the blade, uh, the plasma blade by itself uh, and lighting that and if I can also dealing with the noise, the sound when you are moving the lightsaber and all this kind of stuff. Um, I have a lot of unknown for this part because um, I have no knowledge in electronics. Um, then I will try to follow stuff on the internet and um, just just look at this video, this is very interesting. It's also using 3D printing uh, to build the hilt by itself. It's not Caroline, but uh, it's very informative and subscribe to his channel. It's uh, I think this is very good. Um, and just the last, last thing, while I was looking at references for uh, the lightsaber to use, um, I found this link um, about props from uh, Pinewood Studios who did a lot of things for Star Wars and uh, it's an article that they rebuilt some props to sell on the Star Wars website, high-end props which are just a replica from the one from the movie. Then these are the closest one to uh, the movie's one and I was happy to see some Caroline uh, helmets. Um, and one of them, let me scroll, of course, uh, uh, Vader helmet uh, melted one. Um, and one of them is a Caloran uh, uh, lightsaber inside of the brush, which uh, I find that uh, very funny. I guess uh, Joe Cooper, who did uh, this lightsaber, perhaps worked from the scan data and then rebuild everything. I have no idea, then I'll try to reach them, uh, at least for some question. Uh, let me share the link as well in the chat. It will be in the description. Uh, on YouTube, then you can see some close-up before painting. It's it's interesting to see. Uh, of course, how the brush has been involved with that and uh, the final result. Um, anyway, just scroll. You will see more the brush. Uh, I don't know where exactly, but I think there is another uh, image with the brush. If I'm not wrong, no. Yes, yes, this one. Okay, and this extra one. Okay, then let's go back inside of the brush. Um, I don't know how much time it will take for me to do this uh, um, this hilt of the Kylo Ren helmet, uh, helmet, uh, lightsaber. Sorry, I'm so used about saying Kylo Ren helmet that I may <laughs> um, say something wrong. Um, anyway, um, it will be mainly the modeler. Uh, because this is very mechanical shapes, but I will combine that with uh, the live boolean and uh, of course extra tools like a remesh. Um, I will try to be as much as possible screen accurate, but since it's almost impossible to see his lightsaber uh, on uh, in the movie, I only found some references from props that you can buy uh, in stores or these photos here and then. It's very difficult. Then I try to do my best, and to be honest, I also had uh, had a very hard time to have the good size of uh, this lightsaber, and I still don't know what is the length of the blade, the plasma blade. Uh, no idea. Ah, uh, then I will do my best. Okay. Then the first thing I will do, of course, will be to work with references. Then I have my usual um, pure ref uh, application with. Uh, the images uh, just loaded like that. I'm able to scroll. I have more images, but at least this one. Um, and uh, for this time, I want to work with a background image, but a background shape because I want to have the good scale and the good size as much as possible. Um, then I found the size of the lightsaber, which is a ratio of one by two, which is great. Um, the length, sorry, I will speak in centimeters. It's 30 centimeters for the, the height and 15 uh, centimeters for the width. Then this is just twice the size for the horizontal, horizontal, horizontal versus vertical size. Um, then to do that, I will go in Lightbox and let me just remove Pure F for now. Uh, and I will load a plane and you have, if I remember, it's not on the good location, but it's in Tool and in Tool, in I think it's in Matchmaker, it has been not moved on the good, no, not Matchmaker. Um, 
It's in image plane. I don't know why, but polyplane arrived in image plane. Um, then I just load this plane. Why? Because this plane already have UVs. Then I will be able to apply some texture on it. Um, and this plane, I will already, I mean, just, uh, um, I will start by uh, defining its size. Uh, first thing I will do is going in export and check about my scale size, which is zero. Let me just switch to one. I want to keep everything at a one scale value um, inside of ZBrush. And then in geometry, you have the size setting and then I can input a size and you have a global scale, which is a bounding box, but you have the X, Y and Z. And of course, the Z value is almost uh, inexistent, uh, almost no value since it's just a, uh, a 2D plane. But at least in the X, X axis, I can set the value of 1.5. And for the height, which is not 2, but I will put 3. And I will leave as is uh, the Z uh, depth. Of course, you see, because of the approximation inside of the brush, the value just uh, changed a little bit. Um, I can remove my perspective. And because of that, I have now the good bounding box, let's say, uh, even if it's just one plane for my uh, lightsaber. And why I didn't put 30 but 3? Because again, I'm, I'm always trying to explain that to people is uh, ZBrush is working better when your mesh, your model is between, let's say, 0 0.5 up to 7, 10, 15, but not 30. Uh, something like 15 by 30 will make uh, a big model. And this is where you start to have some issues where you move brush doesn't move that much or the brush size uh, is not that big. Then I just working at 10th of the size. And when I will export a 3D printing, I will multiply by 10 with 3D print hub my model before exporting. And of course, if you have some question, just ask uh, as usual, I will do my best to answer them. Okay. And before our service, just a very quick Photoshop, but I prepare some textures then I can import a texture, which is in my H drive and color and lightsaber references. And you see, I have my reference front, reference back. If I load this one, you see, I already prepared a texture, which is uh, this uh, one by two ratio. And then it just fits exactly this uh, work, uh, this plane. I have other ones. Let me import, let's say this one. And like that, I have approximately the good size. Why I say approximately? Because of the perspective on the photo, you see that on this area, this look, it looks fine, but on this area, definitely not because of the perspective is kind of bended. Then it's roughly the good size, but it will be enough for what I, I would like to work on. Um, and to have a better view, I will apply a flat color material to avoid having shading on my uh, my plane. And I will go in my uh, utilities on top and switch in material and not color. And in my draw, uh, sorry, color, I will do a fill object like that. I filled my, uh, whoops, why? What did I do? Color fill object. And you switch back. Mm -hmm. Something is off. Well, I'll deal with that. I don't know why. It's a polyplane. This is polygon. There is no reason. I don't know. Anyway, um, let's move forward. Then now let's start to, to work and sculpt. And in fact, not really sculpting. I, I won't use my pen for now, just with my mouse, because I would work with the Z modeler. Um, just to do a, a quick breakdown uh, at the beginning before modeling. Again, I will work with 3D printing and I need as much as possible to anticipate my model. Uh, first thing is this hilt is 30 centimeters for the height, which is uh, this size, then you have your two hands and the top part here. Then that's why this is quite big. This is not a small props. Um, then my printer, the form two I will use for that is 17.5 centimeters for the height. Then definitely too big. Then even if I try to change the orientation, uh, it won't fit. Then I will need to break this model in multiple parts. Then. Uh, 
also something I need to anticipate and for now this is quite an unknown is I need to put electronics inside. I will need to put batteries. Then I will need to have a way to access these batteries to, to, to charge them. Um, then I will probably split my model in this part here, just below, then even if I have this connector here. Um, this kind of shape, uh, which is just going in, uh, on top of this cylinder, will be separate. This one will be separate, and I guess all these, uh, uh, this main part of the body will be separate, and uh, the two side uh, uh, part will be separate as well. Then this is um, probably this part. Like that, I will have more control, uh, and also I need to anticipate for the painting. Uh, the more part I have, the easier to be for the painting, for the assembly, uh, and also to deal the support with the 3D printing. Okay. Um, okay, then let's start. And I will work with all these cylinders and I will try to do my best after, not today, but I hope to, to do most of the parts today. Um, but the next section, a uh, section, um, stream will be mainly about uh, how to split all these parts, which will be tricky for some of them. Um, okay, then I will start to build the main shape. I won't go in, in too much in detail, but at least building the shapes. Um, then this uh, polyplane, I will leave it as is, um, but I will just move it, no, rotating, sorry, move it in the background like that. And uh, let me append a cylinder 3D, which is in the center of the scene already. Oh, no, let's not do that. Sorry. I will switch to the primitive cylinder of 3D and after I will happen that, but I need to do some changes on this model. Let me display the polyframe. I will display a lot of the polyframe because I will work with the Z modeler. Um, in initialize, I can change some settings and for the X, let's say put 50, um, the Z 50, oh, not the Z, up, Why? 50 like that. Uh, and Let's switch to 100, uh, and I will change my um, my resolution. And I will stick, I think, to something like 16. The idea is to, when you are on top, having on each axis, having an edge. Like that, you can uh, split easily. And for the vertical resolution, I will, yeah, I will do something like that. If I need later, I will be able to add more if I want. Okay, then my cylinder is done. I can make something which will be editable, then the make poly mesh 3D. And I go back to my scene and I can, in my sub tool, then insert this cylinder 3D. And this is where it's very convenient to have um, your background reference at the good size is, then I'm able to switch to my gizmo and say, okay, I have this shape, which will be here. Then I can scale it like that. I can duplicate it. Then I have another one. I can go below and changing the scale. And you see, if I'm hiding my model, this one below is a bit smaller, then I can scale it down. I need to refine, of course, because you see it's not very, <coughs> the, the center is not really aligned with the, 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 the scene, but I know it will be, it will be a little bit smaller. Oops. And it will go inside of the other. that and this one is probably a little bit okay and I will just scale down this one slightly okay and I will do this one duplicate down. 
I can move my guy, my gizmo, my gizmo, and then doing my scale like that. Okay, uh, Doug, will you start your base shapes using sweep profile? Uh, as it mostly cylindrical? No, I don't use a sweep profile. Uh, this is this one. Uh, you mentioned uh, where is my this one? No, because you need to control with curves and obviously I will work with multiple shapes like, like you can see right now and this one is great when you want to do some vase uh, on this kind of shape but if you want to have straight line it's better to work with cylinders eventually you will like I'm doing right now doing this kind of assembly um, between your, your, your different parts well at least this is the way I'm uh, I will do that um, and uh, let me bring back my references like this, why my music stops? Sorry. Then, um, let's do this part and this part. Uh, oops, sorry. Okay, uh, duplicate, rotate. And uh, one other thing I have to consider as well is um, I, I will need to uh, to connect these blades. But if I want, I would like to have a version without uh, the, the plasma blade. Um, but I need to see what is inside. You see on this reference, this part. I want or something like this, and being able to just plug uh, uh, the model I will print just for the plasma blade. And I really need to think uh, of all of that. Like this. Oh, let me go on the other side. Because like this, I can do a mirror and weld. And you see this tube seems to be the same on both sides. Then let me go that way. And in my geometry modify topology I can do a mirror and weld like this it's welded on both sides uh, let me center that and perhaps scale it down a little bit like this another reason why I'm uh, working with all this model like that and scaling globally is because you see it's a line it keeps my alignment between all items, which is again very important. Um, and on the top part, this I will just do this cylinder here, which is, I think, uh, difficult. I guess it's yeah, it's bigger than that one. This one, I think this radius is very close to that one. I will duplicate, Control Shift D. See like this. And I need to finish exactly on the edge of this background a reference. Because I know this is a good side that I will need to have. And now we we'll just do this, just this um cylinder here and I will work on the shape after. Control Shift D to duplicate. Change the radius. Then at this stage there is nothing really complex. It's very basic modeling. Uh, let me see. This cylinder, yep. I'm trying to see the alignment going this way. Should be okay. Okay, uh, let me hide my grid. I don't need it. Okay, then at this stage, except this extrusion on top of this part, I have all the main shapes. Okay, it's not very advanced, it's very basic, but at least I know that everything is roughly in position. Um, 
I'm a bit more concerned about yeah, this shape and this one. I know it's not very aligned, but it seems to be uh, not that small. Uh, I need also to say that there is multiple versions uh, of that. Uh, again, because there is not uh, a lot of official uh, 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 model, it's difficult to know then. It seems to be that way. And this one is going up inside then. then I will need to do a kind of insertion from this one inside of this one. Um, then uh, Aindao, I hope I pronounce well your nickname, um, is asking how do I keep my reference images and the brush on the same screen? Uh, you have multiple solutions, in fact, to do that. Uh, what you see uh, uh, here in the, uh, on the side is an application. It's not ZBrush. It's an application named uh, called Pure Ref. Uh, you can Google Pure Ref. Uh, I'm typing that. You can Google it. You will find that this is a freeware, I mean, a donationware, and you can spend five bucks in that, and it's really worth these five bucks um, for the application, which is very convenient. I use that a lot. Or you can, inside of the brush, just loading with a, a, a spotlight, some images, and you have a lot of videos explaining that um, to work with references, which are inside of the brush document. And here in the background, this is just a 2D plane with UVs, and I apply the texture on top of that. Then this is multiple solutions to, uh, um, to apply your uh, background uh, um, references. And what I will do at this stage will be obviously to save my project. Okay. Then my uh, first steps will be to uh, let me think. Um, I think I will work on these shapes. So the basis. Um, I will work later on all these details for the cylinder, which is not uh, a big deal, but at least doing this cylinder, this inside part, uh, and uh, these shapes like that. Uh, okay, then for the shapes, I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them, I guess. Uh, then I will use a remesh to do that, and this is roughly based extrusion with some radius. It shouldn't be very complex. Um, then what I will do, I will append uh, whatever the shape, a cube 3 dish. I don't care, but I will convert that quickly to initialize to a quick cube, which is way smaller. Like this, I will put it on front. That. This and I will start to model uh, the shape. Which is going, I'm just trying to put the good size like before. I'm not trying to be uh, 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 accurate in, a, in the shape by itself, but at least the size. The problem is I don't have exactly a front view of that, um, but it seems to be large and then become thin. Um, then let's switch to my Zimmerler brush. I need to enable my symmetry and I will insert my edges like this and if I'm looking at this shape let me see if I don't have a uh, uh, higher resolution okay you see this top shape going on top of this one and you have from the cylinder this uh, uh, part which is going on top and from this one then you have two shapes um, and uh, what I will do I will build both shapes in fact um, 
and let's do that the smart way. Hi Dixie from Australia. Um, okay, um, mm, 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 let me duplicate that one. Control Shift D to duplicate as usual. Can move, can scale slightly and you see it need to be on top of that one let me hide this one and why 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 this one is too big i guess no oh, no should be okay uh, let me go back to my references. You see, I uh, top of this cylinder, this one. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I think I just crop a little bit. Yeah, it should be more like this. And yes, I'm working with the last uh, latest version of ZBrush, which is ZBrush for R8 P2. And uh, let me remove this edge. I don't need that one. And for the shape as well. And I will use my slide. Where is slide? edge that make me think that perhaps it's a little bit too big for this one because if I have the same radius should be just on the boundary um, and speaking of boundary since it's rounded Just give this rounded shape. Of course, uh, we see a lot of polygons right now. Uh, at the end, it will be uh, obviously different. And I will refine anyway when I will apply the smoothing because right now, if I apply the smoothing, it will be something like that, which is not very uh, nice. But uh, at least uh, let me solo this model. Like this. And I can start uh, applying some smoothing quotes to be thick. I think more like this. I want to bevel my model, then solo. And I can use a bevel, but I'm more the type of, oh, mm. let me do something else. Let me apply a bevel, but like this. And I will insert my edges on the border. Like this. Like that, I'm closer to the shape I'm looking for. And you see it's kind of uh, going a little bit inside slightly. Let me hide my background references for now, at least. Okay, then this shape is okay. I will do the one on top. 
she's here. And uh, draw. Let me center that to my selection without the symmetry. Except that it should go more just almost on the edge. Oh, I did a mistake. Um, when I set up my references, let me just go back. You see, I, I, I just look at this uh, uh, cylinder, this open cylinder, but below the hilt, you have this kind of red cap. I don't know what it is. Uh, at least I would be able to access some battery perhaps that way. Um, then I need to slightly move that one like that. I see there is some question in the chat. I will look at them soon. Um, just finishing that. looking at my gizmo. Okay. Um. Okay, thank you Modakena for answering for me. Okay, I'm to build a bit wider. I think I did something wrong because it was not aligned anymore. Well, it's not that problematic. You see, we see on the, the side that the shape. this part and now I should be able to do like before applying my smoothing on it and I think it's going oh let me slide my edges No, I want to slide. Oops. Now it slide my points. Okay, let me just remove my background reference. So problem with the background reference is um, it takes a focus when you are uh, doing a selection, something like that, it's try to snap to it, which is a little bit annoying. Okay. 
Okay, then like before. You see, I did, I don't know at which stage, but I didn't select it a good uh, uh, item. Then I can switch back to my Z model brush and sliding, 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 sorry, slightly the edges that way. Okay, and then like before, I can insert. Okay, I need to check at that. I need to avoid this kind of overlap. This is all these details which takes quite some time. But it's important to uh, be sure that it will be like it should be. Now in fact it's going move, ah shit. Sorry for my vocabulary. <laughs> Um, let me solve that. You see there is a small flat part, it's not going just exactly inside in. Uh, let me solve that. And, um, that up. Let me fix this gap. And I will add an extra edge loop just to be sure it's it remains straight. Okay. Um Just make that a bit thinner and refining this shape to be a line. Use the top part. like this okay then I think it's let's say okay for both of them uh, yeah perhaps changing a little bit that I'm fixing what is below 
and right now I will duplicate everything around to have six copies and um, what I will do is because I will print everything as a single shape um, I will merge them down quack it feels that it's a little bit too big I think I need to increase this radius yeah like this Sorry, I'm. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, one click. Um, okay. And what I will do is uh, I will apply some smoothing on it because I, I have a hard time just to see what is the result uh, of that. Then let's just apply a little bevel on both edges. Okay, like this, I'm able to snap with this one. Then if I'm scaling my model now, can be aligned and I need to fix this inside part you see everything like this should be fixed shouldn't be visible Let me up, move like this. Sold. <laughs> then, like I said, I want to duplicate everything, but having six copies all around, which would be the same for this shape here and this kind of extrusion and thing like that. And for some of them, will be just the radial symmetry because I want to apply everything on six uh, items, while other will be just regular model that I will duplicate. This one will be pretty easy. Um, what I can even do is doing this one since, since I have all these copies. Oh, not everywhere. Mm. And I think this is the same shape you see here and here. This is the same. Okay, good to know. I didn't notice earlier. Yeah, this is the same. Then in fact, I have six copies minus one to do. Then I will do six. Anyway. Um, Okay, let me just create one polygroups, this one just a single polygroups, and now we'll do a merge down without my smoothing. Okay, like this. Then merge uh, down. Yes, I know I can't undo that. And I will do my six copy. To do that, I will do, I will uh, uh, use a remesh. Okay, a remesh. I want to have six copies with the uh, vertical axis, if I'm not wrong, which is, I don't know why this is, yeah, this is the Y axis. Uh, rotate Y, I want 360 degrees, but I want to change the pivot point to be uh, a line um, with the center of my model. And it will be the Z1. Yep. And I have no fucking idea what is a good value, <laughs> which is, seems to be two. <laughs> what I just input. Okay. Anyway, I can change that later. But you see, like this, I've been able to add my copies. Uh, it seems to be pretty good. A little bit is just. Just a little bit is missing. Let me let put two point eleven twelve. Let's say twelve. The idea is to have the pivot point of my operation between uh, just being at the center of this cylinder. But you see, like this, 
Okay, it's already done. Um, okay, let me go back on that one. Uh, and uh, let me see if I have another view, which is more interesting. Yeah, all of them are kind of blurish. Let's model that. So, going to the Z modeler, and again, I will insert to be something like that. And let me solo. And I will Q mesh my model to go in. And on top of that, of course, I will put all these details. Um, oh, no. Uh, I don't know which one is the best one, because this one seems to be quite empty, while this one, you see the model seems to fill out. Oh, no, there is this gap. I do everything separate and after I will see how can I merge everything. Because I think this cylinder is kind of separate. It's difficult to work when you don't know exactly uh, how it's built. Yeah, there is quite some gap in fact then, yeah. And I should have this cylinder inside. Okay, like before, I will apply some bevel and insert. Don't forget that if you apply once a bevel, if you click after just once, you will reapply the same bevel again and again. Okay, and just below you have this part, which is, I don't have a lot of photos on that. Let me check at my references. Um, do we have better photos of that? Mm, yes, I have one. Oh, it's not. Oh, interesting. You see, this part is not a cylinder. It's just uh, uh, hexagonal, an hexagonal shape, I think, which is a line with the holes. Okay, and you see this cylinder, I, I don't know, I think it's just to open. Um, let's do that. Uh, let me put that in pure ref. And mm, you see, my question is uh, at this stage is um, how much I need to build in one shape or another shape? Because my concern is not to sculpt that, I mean to model that. But you see, this is a quite red color, very metallic. And if I want to paint this part as two parts, just the time to um, uh, to put the masking tape and painting may be problematic then perhaps. I will build that as a separate shape, probably. Then what I will do is let me Q mesh all of that. No. Um, let me remove this edge. And I will Q mesh it inside and now I will select Q mesh polygroup all this or polygroup island to be easier polygroup island but in order to not Q mesh like this but I will press the control key you see pressing the control key will do a separate mesh like that and Oops, a little bit. Need to be just on top. 
that and now I'm able to QMesh this shape and let me oh let me do something different I just want to keep just want to keep this font one and now I just have this model and I can split with what is hidden sorry it has been a bit technical I just wanted to have just this shape and not uh, everything else then I can split as a separate sub tool split hidden and you have this shape now and this one this is a separate model and I can QMesh this uh, flat island. I guess like this. And I can scale this flat island. I can um, bevel the edges can solo see like this can go back to that one apply same thing a bevel a bevel And if I want to do this opening here, which is, I don't know, I, I guess a kind of flat uh, uh, cube with a kind of rounded uh, uh, part on top. Uh, again, with the Z modeler, I will append, uh, yeah, I will do a quick cube. Like this, let me move it down. And for this quick cube, um, I want to have a kind of rounded uh, shape on top. Then what you can do is you can, uh, uh, for a single polygon, you can bridge two poly connected polygons with a circle. And you see, you can shape like that. Then what I want is to have a perfect circle. Then I don't want to have an interactive curvature, but a curvature, let's say, of 50, and a resolution of six, uh, 8, and you see like that, you can have your shape. But what I want to go is, um, no, I can't, I need to go to interactive. Oh, oh I think I will do with arc and line. And Oh, sorry, I, I was trying to change the resolution, but uh, I was not in the good mode. Uh, run corner. I think it will be more something like that. Okay, then now I can move and flatten that. Just trying to have the shape that I want to have. I will apply a bevel on the edges, quite a big bevel, that one. And a bevel on top of the bevel. Then I can apply my smoothing. And uh, for now, we'll just align everything with uh, uh, the shape here. Uh, perhaps it's on the side, but I don't care for now. I just want to build, and because it will be a separate part, I will be able later to uh, uh, change this shape. I don't know how far. It seems to go after the center. Center should be there, then I guess it's more like this. 
and subtool I can work with uh, this one let me just go down I will cut a new start groups and with the live boolean mode I'm able to build like this this shape and interactively can change the depth of the model uh, in solo mode what I can do as well is let me remove this bevel uh, uh, insert now we'll do something different this scale flat island and I will move it on top then I will do a Q mesh and now I can bevel that one why I'm doing that is because if I remove my solo mode we can select everything, inverse, let me remove my polyframe and if I move down you see I'm able to create this kind of of bevel area just to change the shape slightly like that okay Reclus, uh, right, you, um, right now we leave it at ease I won't convert until I'm sure to be done with the mesh, which is uh, obviously it should be the final mesh. But I will need to consider a small gap between both uh, objects. Um, let me just recenter that. Because um, I need to have some tolerance before uh, sculpting. And I will need, you see, I have all this internal part like that which are uh, uh, on this part of the mesh they will need to remove as well then I need to consider all these kind of things right now I'm more focusing on the model by itself on the visual aspect and uh, after I will work of course on refining the details and being perhaps smoother and uh, giving a more natural look than being too much mathematical hi Gary uh, Gary, for the chess, I didn't have the time to. Sorry, this is off topic, um, because last week uh, I was working on uh, chess pieces uh, with ZBrush in French. Then I guess you saw this small one. Let me switch to um, the uh, big one. You see, I build these chess pieces, but I still have uh, the other part, which is the king and bishop uh, and uh, the pawn that I, I need to print. Uh, I just print in big the bishop, which is just his head, um, like that. Then I did three parts in three hours and a half uh, last week. Uh, I had the full body, but I wanted to, to test something. In fact, I tested a recutting of my um, uh, 3D printer uh, uh, resin tank. You have the silicone at the, at the end, and I test, tested that with this model. Uh, obviously, it's, it was... Uh, Hey, that's good it's 50 microns but you have a lot of details you know if you see them on the cloths uh, small marks anyway and yes uh, I just need to work on the on the night I, I don't have the time anyway um, let me switch back to the screen okay uh, then I will do these shapes like this it will be easy like that I can duplicate both of them uh, it will be faster and I will just smooth that one. Oh, I don't know let me check something you see the difference between these two lights I don't know which one is the best one but you have a small gap here you see a border here while on this one there is not I have no idea at all which one is the best you see this one seems to be one shape from here to here 
while well, this one seems to be, uh, I guess the body below seems to be the same shape. Yeah, it's difficult to know. Perhaps I will do everything, I don't know yet. Very difficult to know. <laughs> anyway, I will do this small gap here. Let me remove my live boolean because I don't need it for now. And I will QMesh uh, my polyloop. Um, polyloop, where are you? Polyloop, 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 polyloop. Um, let me insert. Okay, like this. Let me apply a small bevel. Uh, bevel, 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 bevel. And I will apply quite a big bevel because I want to have kind of soft transition between both of them. Same for this one. Perhaps it's too big. And I will remove this edge. And I will insert one which is close to avoid having quite a big transition. Um, Lufix, Lufix, uh, can you can you have a link to share of your version? It would be great to see. Um, I guess I will build that as one shape. One, two, three, four, five. Um, no idea about the number of elements. I guess this is twelve because there is six of them. Difficult to know, difficult to know. Uh, since I have six, uh, six in between, and this one are aligned, then I have, should have 12. You see, it's aligned, aligned. Okay, um, then what I will do now is, oops, sorry for pure ref. Um, I will build this shape and this shape because they are the same. I will duplicate them and after I will work on this part. Yeah, that's nice. Then I guess you you had the same question as me. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, what I said. Okay, yeah, this part. <laughs> Sorry. Then um. No, I just want to. I wanted to insert not append. Uh, I will do one by one quick cube this time. Uh, initialize. Oh, uh, something I need to do as well is. Uh, I think I will rotate that now to be aligned with this uh, the side. The problem is I need to align with the center. Is how oh, the, the hell I'll do that? Um, I think you can apply the remesh now anyway because it seems to be okay. Uh, okay, like this. 
okay rotated and this is where I see I'm not perfectly aligned with my rotation okay like this then I can go back to this cube There is kind of extrusion inside of this cube, this cube cylinder as well, but I will use a boolean for that. Because I can spend a lot of time by trying to find the best shape and edges, but sometimes just the boolean put that a negative done. Uh, I think I will do that way. Um, then. And this one is going a uh, little bit lower. And what I will do now is I will duplicate this one that I will put there. And again, I will use it as a negative mesh of this one. I know now to be negative and of this top cylinder, let me just move it down. Let's try to organize things. And if I bring back the live Boolean, Okay, you see this is negative now. This is what I wanted to have. Um, I can just be like that. Um, let's apply a dynamic subdivision, but with QGrid. like that and same as before I will be able to uh, duplicate this one with a remesh a remesh I want to have six of them same as before rotation for the Y 360 and pivot point was a minus two something like that um, no, it was uh, Z value, sorry. And I don't need to uh, go back. Let me s go back to the RMesh. I don't need to have a big part being removed. Only the bottom part should be okay. Um, then let me switch back to this model and but for this one of course obviously I won't use a boolean operation I will just model that uh, by myself huh? um, Uh, what I can do is I can insert uh, multiple edges, but the problem is if you do that, oops, sorry, you pipe them everywhere. I just want to have some of them. Mm. Yes, I will do that. Let's, oops, sorry. Let's type 16. And now with my bevel, oh, 
How many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I can QMesh a poly loop. Like this. And let's do some beaver because I want to be smooth enough. Sorry, come on. Same everywhere. Okay, then I have my bevel apply. Now I can insert, oops. Why I don't have my symmetry on, oh yes it is. Insert Thomas. Sorry, um, I just want to have a single edge. Just trying to see what it looks like. Seems to be okay. Um, let me do a mirror and weld. Why? Because I just have, um, I don't have the middle uh, edge and the brush doesn't, work to, doesn't like to work with a symmetry like this. Okay, me on well, and now I'm able to work with the symmetry. And if I think it's not close enough, move a little bit the edges on the side then I will slide them slide an edge loop to make that more rounded Okay, of course you don't see that because of the boolean like this. Uh, perhaps it was a bit too much. Okay. Then same as before, I will duplicate my model, but this time, since it's aligned on the same location, I will duplicate like this. But I will change the depth of my model because I will need to, to, to do this kind of um, openings there. And again, same process, <laughs> nothing new, a remesh, and six copies, like before, and of course I will delete the extra one I need to remove uh, later. Um, do, 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 do. I want on the Y 360 for the rotation. And pivot point for the Y, I need to
find a good value okay it looks to be the good one Again, let me save. Um, yes, yeah, Dixie 46, starting with ZBrush Core is a good idea. It, it will help you to grasp all the sculpting process and the philosophy of ZBrush before smoothing, uh, obviously, to uh, the full version of ZBrush, uh, which brings, of course, more, more functionalities. Um, yeah, Matthew, um, then ZBrush is a streamlined version, ZBrush Core, sorry, is a streamlined version of ZBrush. Uh, it's focusing mainly on the core foundation of the application, then mainly um, uh, building your shapes with Dynamesh, you can add details, details sorry, with subdivision levels, um, doing some painting. In fact, it's everything about ZBrush without all the technical advanced features of ZBrush. Uh, roughly. Uh, and yes, you have 20 millions, uh, you have a limit of 25, not 20, in fact, millions of polygons per ZBrush core, but per subtool. If you have five subtools, you will have uh, 125 millions of polygons. Um, okay, um, let's continue. Um, I will build this plate, in fact, doing that negatively. If I'm not wrong, I have 12 of them, which should be perfect. How many of them I did? 16, not 12. Shit. <laughs> uh, shit, 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 shit. Then it may be worth initialize. Twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I prefer counting. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm trying just to uh, to do something different. I can copy now. Go back to my project. Let me remove my live boolean and let me paste paste paste. I just want to have the same shape, but I don't know yet if I will split or not. Then mm -hmm. if I um yeah this is what i don't like um hmm, <laughs> that's a problem um let's try something else so I'm trying to think about how I will split all these edges, but ZBrush doesn't like um, to to work with. Um, you see, yeah, like this radial symmetry was the solution. QMesh polygroup. Mm. 
let me first insert no Qmesh uh, flat island and now I can Qmesh polygroup all Okay, like this. Then I can hide at least this one. Perhaps I will keep it, but at least I can hide it. And I will need to think about the transition between both. In fact, I think I will mix both of them, but my concern is the size. Uh, oh yes, no, because with this size, it should fit the printer. I hope. Then what I will do is, sorry, I will rebuild my model just to do this uh, transition in between. Um, let me smooth that, not smoothing, but uh, applying some bevels. Um, no, edges. I don't care on the of the top. So we want to have a kind of soft transition. But I think let me just bring back my reference in the background. Uh, where are you, my reference? Oh, I think it was. Yeah, I thought it was too big, but now it's okay. It's a good scale. In fact, what I will do is I will I will re extrude everything to rebuild this shape here. Then insert. And now I will Qmesh um, I need to be very careful because when you think that you don't select one polygon sometimes this is one in the background which is selected and be very careful with this Alt and click in the Z modeler Okay, then now I can do this flat island extrusion, doing a scale of this. Why it's scaling like this? Anyway, let me just move it. Now let's go back to my QMesh. Okay, this one and this one I can hide it, and I will need to assign to this. Big one. Let me move it to the bottom. Okay. 
Yeah, I need to be very careful about th that. Okay. This is a good one. Of course, I need to apply some smoothing, but uh, that's a good shape. Yeah, you see, this is quite some uh, uh, try and errors. Um, anyway. Um, Oops, quite some stuff in the chat. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Deval Robot, you have a part of the answer, but not totally. Uh, we are displaying all the polygons. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can buy the bundle with ZBrush Core and uh, an Intuos uh, medium size, which is not the small size, the medium size. Uh, this is the Intio 3D uh, bundle from Wacom. You can buy it on Amazon. I mean, uh, um, a lot of resellers, but Amazon is, of course, a good way to, to buy it. Um, yeah, Mother Kaina, the, the bundle is limited to some countries, in fact, on our store. Um, but Amazon is the best, uh, I mean, the easiest way. Um, yeah, and um, Robin. Robin Lynch, Lynch, sorry, for the t-shirt, you can buy it on the ZBrush uh, Pixelogic store. Um, but the regular black one, the one I have right now, sorry, this is in orange. Uh, and so, sorry, this is, you have the, the, the green screen, which uh, overlap with that. Um, this kind of t-shirt are more special editions. It's a Japanese one and very few of them has been done. Um, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I think that, yeah, these blocks, you see, some of them seems to be thinner, but I think I will keep that like this <laughs> because I don't want to spend too much time also on that because it's already uh, one, hour and 40, one hour and 45 minute time on that. And I'm far to be done. Then perhaps I will find that later, which can be done. Um, well, you know what? Uh, you ask me, let's do it. Um, transform radial symmetry, let's say six. Mm. He's really visual. I don't know if it will work fine or not. Why I have that when I'm scaling? Oh, weird. Shit, I didn't look at my value. A bit more, perhaps? Like this. <laughs> uh, Starbucks, your, your Belgium, and where would you advise to look for a first job as ZBrush artist in Eva, France, Belgium, Germany? Uh, the problem is, what do you mean by uh, a ZBrush artist? You can do so many things with ZBrush. It can be jewelry design, it can be uh, archaeolo uh, archaeological uh, uh, stuff, it can be medical illustration, it can, of course, video game, it can be a lot of things, and it's really up to you. Um, you have a lot of small, I don't know for Belgium uh, at least, but Germany's business is growing, you have multiple studios, uh, it's really up to you and of course your skills, it's very difficult. But my best advice is make make your work visible. If you want to find have people, have people finding you, you need to have your work being visible on social media, our stations, the brush central, and of course reaching the companies. Um, 
And for video games, you need to contact studios. <laughs> um, okay, transparent. Let me just continue this smoothing thing. With my Z modeler, I can remove my symmetry. Uh, bevel, 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 where I use a bevel. I do. I think I did too many undos. I don't know what did I do. I did some hotkeys. I don't know what. Insert um, I'm adding some extra edge loop just to be sure that the smoothing will be consistent. That's a problem when you have quite big polygons like this. Yeah, it won't be yeah too much wanted because of that. I don't like that. That's why having two shapes is better because you have a better control on the model. Shimata, comme diraient nos amis japonais. Sorry, I'm mixing French and Japanese. Uh... Keep this cylinder there because it may be problematic for the transition. Then I will keep this one and I will delete uh, everything. I will, yeah, keep that and later when I will smooth that by sending. I don't know yet, but let me just go to my original ID. You see, you're doing mistakes. And, oops. I duplicated my model, sorry. This one, then now I can do a delete hidden uh, geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, and I want to close this gap. Then to do that, I can go this close, and if you click on this convex hole, this is what you have right now. But if you go to this convex hole, you see you can have something which is uh, better for low polygon models like this. And let me bring back to what I had before. Um, flat Island. Okay. 
Okay, it's start to take shape a little bit. Okay, let's now start with the fun part. Uh, of course, uh, uh, as you know, or perhaps don't know, uh, the Caroen lightsaber have some uh, uh, damaged parts here on the back side of the hilt, uh, like this one. This is the stuff I will do more at the end. I'm really trying to build all the shapes, and after I will work on refining the model. Like this part, I don't know if it, this is uh, um, uh, the, the, the trigger, the, I don't know the name. Um, And I don't know how to. S where is the switch? In fact, <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, uh, this button. I guess it would be this button, but I'm not sure. Then <laughs> uh, I guess it will be where will be the trigger. Okay, then uh, let's build this shape. And I don't know if it's the same on the bottom or not. No, the bottom side you see is different from the. Front side. Let me move my references. Okay, then of course this part is the same, the tube by itself, but you have I guess this thing is going doing turn all around until this and you have this opening there. Thing there, this part. Okay. Yes, control S. <laughs> um, I'm using a mouse right now and not a pen. I have both, of course, uh, because when I'm working the Z modeler, I find, of course, the, the mouse being less accurate than the brush. Um, when you do your brush stroke, of course, it's better to use a pen. But when you really need to click some vertices and things like that, uh, and doing this right click stuff, uh, the mouse doesn't, I mean, doesn't move the same way as a pen, and it's easier to work like this. That's why I prefer um, working with the mouse for the Z modeler, which is the only exception. Everything else inside of the brush is a pen, at least for me. Um, okay. And um, this cylinder going to this limit, and after you have this extrusion on that side. I have no idea. Do we see it hit? Yeah. Okay, this is okay. Going inside and okay. Then, from my understanding, you have this cylinder which is in fact holding this top part where the uh, the plasma will go out. Then it's it's uh, open with just a thickness, a metallic thickness with all this opening. Then I will do a bunch of Z modeler, uh, Z modeler uh, live boolean to do all this opening. I think it will be easier, um, considering that I may at the end of all this process when I'll be done with uh, the main shape and to refine the shapes. Some of them probably I will use um, the dynamesh just to smooth some edges all around. I don't know yet. This is what I will try to do um, at the end. Okay, then this cylinder going to um, this on front, middle on front, and on back at this stage. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm thinking at the same time. Not so easy. <laughs> Let 
me remove my live body end. Uh, I can already start to do. Insert an edge loop and um, let me bring back my reference. Where are you? Uh, oh, let me switch off reference for the background one. Let me go back to texture map and I will load another one which will be this one okay like this i know of course it has been rotated slightly but i have the distance for my model transparency this one and goes to that one Okay, then I can delete this one, insert. And for this shape here, I will just model. Oh, shit, no, shit, shit, shit. Go there. Okay, I will go to this edge. Let me slide. See, I'm trying really to, <laughs> to, to build the shape and I will slide these vertices. To be like this. And then I will be able to do my extrusion except that it should be wider and not i guess because of the rotation yeah then if i select these polygons i can do oh mm. I should do the opposite, in fact. I should do my thickness outside. Or let me just move that. Okay, I will do the opposite, meaning that um, I will extrude everything like this to mesh a single poly but I will center my gizmo and on this axis with the alt key I will just Rescale like that. And I will do my opening. Uh, mm, not sure yet. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Because I need to build some of the shapes. See, it's until the mid part.
I need to do this opening, but I will do boolean for that. Uh, I won't spend too much time. And for the back part, just go to this level. In fact, there is only this kind of extrusion, this opening, and it should be the same. Um, I don't know what. Ah, okay. No, I think, yeah. I think this is a thickness that, which is here, which stop here. Then I guess there is no thickness. No, it should should be a thickness. Except that not sure what I'm doing right now. Not sure what, what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, this then. Uh, I have no idea, Gary. Uh, you mean by, uh, sorry for my lack of vocabulary, but when you mean um, rifled, rifled, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, you mean this part here? I have no idea, perhaps. Uh, I have no idea. No. Okay, let's bevel things. Um, yeah, that's a problem when you start to put these edges because of the edge loop, the brush will go in all directions, which I don't like at all. Okay, now we like to have this just one edge loop, but doesn't go in this direction. We like to it go. Oh, why I lost one vertex? Ah, sh shit! Why? Some on top. Did I delete something?
Yeah, you see now my, my problem is I want to have one edge like this. So problem is the edge is going from this direction and then on the other side. And I don't want to have this edge being, um, I mean, just added. Then that's a concern. I have one solution, but I don't want to use it. But I think I will need to use it. And because I will have the same problem here to this edge, which is going there, and I don't want that. And if I do that, you see it's adding the edge anyway on the other side. Then what you can do is applying a mask, and then it should take the first edge, but not this next one. Yes, it's taking. Ah, sh <laughs> ah. <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> Let me. Why I can't sometimes we have that with the brush with uh, that you can't select a point and try to go in geometry modify topology and wild points and sometimes it's working sometimes it's not working <laughs> I'm doomed <laughs> okay then let's do something else. Let's delete. Sorry, I, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but uh, at least you will see when you have some issues like that. It's just a matter of topology. It happens. It's happening sometime. Okay. You see, even I'm on top of the point, and you see trying to select this one. Then what I will do will delete just a polygroup island like this, and now I will close my convex hole like that. I will polygroup a single poly, then I can oops. Ah, polygroup uh, what I said um Okay, this one. I have a very hard time. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, okay. Um, mask, polygroup. <laughs> okay, and now I hope that my insert mesh will work without any problem. Um, What I'm trying to avoid is to having this edge loop. Okay, you know what? I will leave it as is. Okay, and it should be okay. <laughs> I just need to refine. That as well. Okay, you see, uh, why do you have this edge because of that one? Well, not a big deal for this one. Okay, sorry. Um, I don't want to crease, in fact, creasing with a Applies the same thing. Oh yes, I could crease. You're right. Yeah, I could crease. Well, too late. <laughs> now, um, cry ride. It, it it won't work. What you say because it tried to go another direction. That's the problem. In terms of the model, is great. I really love to 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 
to, to work with the modeler. And to be honest, I was for a very long, very long time a, a traditional polygonal modeler, and I was knitting, knitting my uh, uh, knitting my polygons one by one. I was more a edge modeler than a box modeler, um, and then I switched to just digital sculpting, and I really enjoyed digital sculpting for quite some time, uh, and I still enjoy that as hell. But for some kind of shape like that, of course, uh, traditional modeling is way faster and easier. But, and the but for me is big, is um, I, uh, uh, the Z modeler was something great because I wanted to, fo I mean, I want to focus on my shape and not really the topology and the Z modeler is great, but sometimes you, anyway, you need a little bit to control your topology. That's why adding these edge loops and bevels help to control the smoothing, but because of the Z modeler doesn't support end guns, it may be tricky sometimes just to add some edge and and not going to other direction. But well, it's not that annoying to be honest. Uh, just times to times, but well, I deal with it to be honest. Uh, okay, um, what I wanted to do is um, yeah, in fact, it was a bit bigger thickness. Something like this because it's going in. Now we'll Q mesh a single poly. I don't know how far it goes, but at least to this level. Mesh flat island. And what I can do is to give more thickness because it's more thicker than it should be. Um, I can Q mesh that. Do I have the symmetry? Yes. Oops. I have an extra edge. I don't know why. Did it get my edge on the other side? No, it didn't. Let me just restart that. Mm -hmm. At which stage did I did something wrong? Okay, yeah, it should be okay now. <laughs> uh, and Q mesh a single polygon. Just one step. Uh, full step. Mm, doesn't snap. Okay, like this, and okay. Sorry for these extra steps. In fact, I'm I'm enabling and disabling the symmetry, which makes me doing these mistakes. Okay. Okay, we'll start to, um, I mean, start to become a bit better. Um, I will do these shapes as well. Um, and this one, in fact, I think I will build two shapes. This one, which I will open. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You see, it seems to be two parts, and perhaps for the painting, I need to split that in two parts. You see, it's always very, <laughs> always difficult to when you are rebuilding something and not creating from scratch to consider uh, all these uh, these items. Um, mm, 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 mm. Yeah. 
Yep, 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 yep. I think I will bully Anna as hell. <laughs> Why do I spend so much time in that? Uh, okay. Okay, then what I will do, I will duplicate, subtool duplicate this model. Um, let me center it and just remove the perspective and I will bring back my background reference. Which goes to the limit of my shape. Let me just bring back the transparency just to see the thickness of that. Yeah, I may need to change the thickness to be a little bit thicker. Yep. I hope it's okay. Okay, like this. Then this shape is just like this. I don't know, there is a cut or not. There is kind of angle. Yes, there is an angle there. And you see, some of them it seems to be one part, while this one seems to be two parts. This one is just one part, and I will build that as a one shape. Okay, then I will slice, 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 and a tube inside. And let me just go down. I always try to work with my um, live boolean. Oops, not a, no, I didn't select it's a good one. Okay, this one. I'm always trying to work with all my live boolean, my model, my star groups at the end, like this, uh, to be sure that I uh, everything on top we just separate. And this one I will duplicate and break that down. As a negative mesh, I will recenter like that, and perhaps moving down, removing my transparency, like Boolean. You see, like that, I start to have my tubes. Um, I will append. Cube 3D, but I will convert as initialize a quick cube as usual. We work on this side. Which is as well a negative cube. Why, why, why? Ah, okay. Okay, sorry, I was asking, wondering why I still see this mesh, but this is the original one on top. And this limit is going up to be aligned with that one. This and I need to put this angle like that. I can duplicate this one, moving like this, being negative as well. You see, we see all the other parts. Of course, I don't need to 
uh, display everything. Um, I just need to see with my background reference if I'm far or not. Oops. Okay, it's not the best image ever made. Okay, like this. Okay, then this uh, cube, which is a negative mesh, I can do a mirror and well to have the same on the other side, like this, and the same for this cube, which I use to remove this part. Geometry, mirror and weld, and like that. Oh, for this mesh, let me just go back to solo mode. Okay, this is the cylinder, and as you can see, definitely it lacks of resolution. Um, same as before, with my Z modeler, I will apply oh, pff, bevel or whatever. Some bevel, and I will insert at the same time, oops, not inset, but insert. some extra polygons. And now I can apply my dynamic subdivision and I will just apply four levels. I will do the same for oops, the uh, other part. Not this one. Um, where are you? which will be the opening and the same for this one. Okay, and geometry, let's go to four. Okay. And I can start to work on that one. And let me look at that. You see, we have this. I don't know how many of them there is. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sixteen. 16, I would say. 14. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, let's go with 16. <laughs> it will be easier for me. Uh, activate symmetry and I can insert an edge. And I can Q mesh. Oops. You see my selection on the other side? Live Boolean, switch to solo mode. Come on. Sorry. Okay. I have no idea how far it's going in. Um, yeah. In fact, I need to subdivide once my model. You will understand soon one why I want to subdivide my model. Uh, 
let me divide once and then delete delete lower and like this I have all the 16 uh, edges and because if I apply before um, 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 come on uh, I just put a bevel then it will put this kind of flat surfaces uh, on top of my uh, cylinder then I won't have a perfect cylinder but a kind of uh, faceted shape like that if I smooth I can subdivide once and then I'm able to work on uh, on these shapes uh, more easier more easily um, and while speaking of symmetry I can use my radial symmetry along the x axis no not x which one is it um, no transform sixteen and it should be the x axis. Uh, let me use my local symmetry Z one. Uh -huh. Okay, you know what? I won't deal with it. I will do that the old way. One, two, three. Sorry, let me just. I deleted an edge, yeah. Okay, let me just finish everything. I just wanted to be sure that it was working fine. Okay. Uh, Perhaps I should add that. I know it's not in the design, I have no idea, but oh, perhaps I have a photo inside of, yeah, I have one. Well, it's going inside, well, not a big deal. Um, okay, that'd be crazy then. But I don't, I don't understand why my radial symmetry doesn't work on that. It should work. Okay, then I can QMesh now. And this. Yeah, why I would like to um, to. Um, Use my radial symmetries to slide all of these edges. And I don't know why. Okay, I think it has been a. Oops. Ah, shit. Yeah, mistake, 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 mistake. Yeah, 
let me remove that. You see, this is totally unprepared. <laughs> Well, anyway, it's connecting. And I would like to move everything down to do this angle. The problem is, why I can't use my radial symmetry? Okay, and now why it's working, I have no idea. <laughs> Oof. Uh, side, no idea at all. <laughs> Okay, I will try to figure out something to put inside, but well, let's deal with that right now. The way it is. Um, okay, let's save. Oops, I think I had some symmetry issues then. Let's do a mirror and weld. Like that, you see it rebuilt everything on the other side. And you see this is where I will use probably um, just a little bit of smoothing on a dynamesh just to run a little bit more of these edges. And I said I need to slice here and here. Then this model. And structure. Let me duplicate that one, which will be negative as well. more angle the problem is I don't know how this part will be there this one Finding this cube because the one is not on the good location, and it sh I should have one cube to go there. Oh, let me do something else, let me hide it. But this one duplicate like before. You see, I have some, perhaps I need to move that one. 
No, let me just look at the front side. Ta the cut should be there. Like this, and this one should be more like this. Little bit thicker. Okay, I'll do the same for the top part, like I did before. Uh, 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 uh. I think this one goes on top. Yeah, you see, this is different from, I don't know, this is three different lightsabers, and this one is kind of separate shape. This one is connected, and this one seems to be separate, but not the same way. No idea. <laughs> um, Okay, let's do something in between. <laughs> in up. Okay, then I will um, scale down this poly loop. Oh, interesting. Well, I'll do something else. <laughs> uh, I will Q-Polish, Q-Polish, Q-Mesh. I say Q-Mesh, uh, this poly loop. To give them this shape there. I will slide this edge more, this edge loop. And same as before, I will Q-mesh a single poly going inside. And like before, I will insert some edge loops. To have a better control on the smoothing. And if I subdivide once, do we have a view? Yeah, it's more inside. Yeah. Yes, I know I have multiple level of subdivision. Then I can do the same thing. Like I said before, I can delete lower and let's act, let's let's sorry activate my radial symmetry transform 16 yep now i can slide just an edge I don't know why it's just doing something like this uh, let me slide well This insert an edge loop. I 
I can bring back my live boolean, remove my solo mode, and my polyframe. Of course, I'm far to be done. Just look at the time, yeah, because I don't. I, I need to stop in 50 minutes. In fact, uh, let's see. We start to move forward. Of course, a lot of details are missing, but uh, at least now the main shapes are almost here. Yeah, I'd like some details and things like that, but uh, at least. I will do that at the end anyway. This is not a big deal at all to do this opening and details. Um, I don't know. Do I do that now or not? I can do these openings with some Boolean operations. Uh, let me uh, boolean uh, sub tools. Uh, let me go back. Oh, I have oh, I need to increase the size of that one. Why? Because it was not clean. It was kind of rounded. Anyway, uh, yes. Uh, let me just do this split here and there. I'm not sure exactly how, how far they are going, but let's split that. Um, then this one. Again, it doesn't have any kind of boolean operation. Then I will add them. Like I said before, I'm always going on the bottom if I want to do boolean operations. Okay, I can delete this one. Uh. Which one did I use? This one? Sorry, I, I'm just looking at, at this shape here. And I need to do a mirror and weld. Mm -hmm. Nope. Why mirror and weld doesn't work? I know. I'm in local symmetry. Mm -hmm. Why, why, why? I don't know why so many things <laughs> doesn't happen the way they should. Uh, why my floor is on the good location? Ah, oh, shit, not the good local. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Sorry. Okay, now it's working better. Okay, then, like I said, I want to do this this opening on on the side. Uh, let me go back to my sub tools and selecting this model. And again, I want to append uh, whatever the shape. Let's say. The Polystar, the initialize, quick cube, and I will stay with the default values. Okay, like this. And that, and it's going pretty deep, close to Okay, this one, the second one, the one which is more in the back is beyond this limit here. And this one should be not very far from where I am. I am right now. The only thing is, let me rescale that. Because you see, I'm cutting like that while it should be perpendicular to the model. And okay, like 
this. Let me just do my Boolean operation just to control what I'm doing. You see like this. And that's why I know I need to clean my other part of my model to be sure that I'm not doing something wrong. You see I'm splitting this part, start group like that. I can start with a good group. I think it shouldn't touch, it should be just on the connection. Like that. And then it's slightly rounded below. And I can, oops, sorry, with my, just moving my gizmo by pressing the R key. And if I display my polyframe, Just giving some angle and uh, let's uh, geometry, dynamic subdivision, dynamic. I want to use a Q grid. Can play with the coverage. And apply a little bit of smoothing. like that and I guess I will need to split that just below to this shape to be more to just to be adapted to that one uh, I can duplicate same thing rotating but this one is beyond it should be uh, it's very, very difficult because I don't have you see just on the limit yeah just in between same depth it seems But this one seems to be closer, that it's difficult to know. I think this one should be more yeah. like this. And like before, mirror and weld. Where are you, mirror and weld? Mirror and weld. And mirror and weld. I guess this cylinder should be uh, going more inside. Oh, let me remove my references because I'm snapping on it. What do I manipulate? at least like this and what I will do is this cylinder let me duplicate it duplicate and move it down my list as a negative mesh and let me scale it See, like that, I can create a small gap for the model. The only thing I will need to do will be probably to just to slice this angle because I don't really like that, especially this one. But perhaps I will keep that just for printing to be sure it will be just on the good spot. Okay. Uh, 
we need to change a little bit uh, uh, my dynamic subdivision. Okay, more rounded. And this is really where I need to work. Perhaps I will do that offline, I don't know yet, but. Uh, I need to fix really this kind of weird artifact. Because if I go, let let just do a test. Okay, let me just duplicate my model just as a test. On top, let me solo that. And let's try the quiz edges. Just just to check what will be the result. Then it means that I will need to remove a lot of edges, all this kind of part that I try to use for the bevel. Okay, like this. It should be okay. Then I have something which is very smooth now. And what I can do is, like as like we, we discussed before, I can use my crease, and I can play with some edges. It may work. That's something good to try. this and as you notice I'm um, doing that edge by edge I don't want to use the edge loop because sometimes like we, we saw before you can have the edge which goes in uh, multiple directions sometimes it's faster to do one by one than trying to do just in one click and then spending a lot of time by cleaning like I did before. Okay, this is what I have so far. Oops. And everything should be very sharp. It should be very sharp. but perhaps too sharp. Well, no, that's not bad. Let me after convert, in fact. So you need some time to add some extra edges. Oh, you see, yeah, it may be tricky for that one. But perhaps I'm I'm putting too much stress on me for this kind of shapes. Because uh, at the scale and for 3D printing it may be not too visible. You see, the only problem I see so far that right now I have clean edges, but oh, let me continue the edge loop all around. You see, it looks nice, but even at, at this location, I have some issues and I need to crease this edge You see, I have this kind of vertex. And the same as before, I have something which is very similar. And something you need to do as well is when you go in geometry and you have this crease section, you can define at which level of smoothing the crease will happen. And you see, I'm just at one. Let me switch at two. 
it start to apply the smoothing at the second level and my dynamic subdivision is at what? 4? 3? and you see now I'm tricking to have some rounded edges it looks in a way perhaps nicer but I still have some issues perhaps less visible but I have this kind of edge which appears on this location and if I switch between this one and this one let me bring back my smoothing yeah perhaps this one yes seems to be anyway nicer not better in a way but let's say nicer I prefer the curvature on this one than this one you see but a little bit of sanding should do the trick. Or I can play as well with the, this level. Um, if I go back to geometry and crease level, go to three. Perhaps it will be, yeah, it may be nicer at three. But I still have this kind of, of shape. And you see if I crease, it's... I need to deal with to keep the curvature or keeping the shape. Then not easy to know. But a little bit of sending, like I said before, should do the trick. And perhaps, yeah, it has been better to go that way. And thank you for adding that. Okay. <laughs> Let me crease everything since I use the crease. I'm not a big user of the crease edge. Uh, it's a mistake from me. Whoops. Oh, no, it was just a feeling that I had. Okay, then let's let's use this one. Solo, live boolean. Okay, I will stop here for today. I'm sorry, but uh, I have other stuff I need to finish for today. Um, as you see, I've been able to um, to build this. Uh, not, of course, not everything, but uh, I guess with the next session, next Sunday, I should be able to... Uh, to, to build uh, um, the whole set series of details, um, which should be okay. Of course, you see it's going through. I need to optimize some part, but uh, uh, so far the main parts are here. Only the opening I need to, to add this kind of big scratch uh, hole uh, in the light saber, the details. But the next session, for, I, I think during three hours, I should be able to do uh, uh, almost everything. And then after the, the other session will be how to split everything and prepare for 3D printing. Meanwhile, I will work on the electronic. Um, for the blade, I need to order some white resin for Formlabs because this white resin is translucent, not translucent, but um, it's not fully uh, open opaque, opaque. Uh, I mean that the light can go through if you have a small thickness um, because why I want to print this blade because you know this plasma uh, from the, the lightsaber is um, is in fury this, this is an old design and the, the, the crystal, 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 crystal um, is a kind of unstable that's why we have not a, a straight line and i don't want to use a regular tube and put some uh, uh, lead inside um with just some uh, some paper i really want to sculpt the blade and print that probably in, in multiple parts um to have something which is of course more um uh, not something regular like like the blade um then 
I try to work on, on all of that during this week and then moving forward this next week. Anyway, um, no, I don't think Pro, uh, um, Pro 40 to 10. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I mean, I need to work, but you see, uh, about it, it was just a comment about the bevel in here, but uh, I know it will be big. Let me just look based on my screen. Uh, let me rotate. Let me go on the side. You see, right now I'm in HD resolution. Okay, and what you see on my screen right now will be the um, full scale, the, the one to one scale, at least for me. And right now I'm on HD resolution, I'm on my sitting 22 inch in screen. Then I have on my screen, this is 30 centimeters, almost for, yeah, 30, 31, 32 centimeters. So perhaps more like that. And this is a full scale of my model. Then obviously, if you have some artifacts, just sending the resin will be far enough because I'm printing in resin. Sorry, and not PLA or ABS. Uh, this is very easy to send. Then it's better to have this this uh, artifact going outside just to send and having something going in. And anyway, even later when I will convert my mesh to DynaMesh, just let's let's do it just as a test quickly. Um, let me. I'm just doing a clone on this of this shape. Um, oh shit! It's not a it's a boolean. Uh, where is it? Okay, this one. Okay, like this. Then what I can do is go back in geometry, and I can dynamesh my model. Dynamesh to what would be the resolution? Okay, way too low. Let me apply it. Uh, dynamesh. Okay, then let's say it's a good resolution. Now I take my pen. <laughs> okay, like this. And if you use the edge polish brush, you see you are able to polish your model and then hiding this artifact. And even if you want to, to run some edges, you can pick this uh, trim dynamic brush and starting to uh, just trim like that slightly, slightly smoothing a little bit like that. Then going the same way here. Then even without going to um, the 3D printing stage, you see like that, I'm able to uh, fix this issue uh, very easily. You see, then why bothering with all of that? Just few strokes, brush strokes, and it's okay. Sorry for the material, it was just to uh, show uh, what would be the, the result. Little bit of smoothing on the DynaMesh, and like that, I'm able to round my edges. To something which is close to the original one. You see, easy. <laughs> Oops, a little bit too strong with my brush. Okay, then that's why, yeah, I spend quite some time because I don't like doing something which doesn't look nice as, as soon as possible for my model. But like I said, during with doing this, um, uh, oops. Why it's so? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, let me. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. 
You see, it's kind of faceted, but again, I can fix that later with some brushes. What I wanted to say is, yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to focus as much as possible on the mesh uh, uh, at the beginning. When you're creating something, it's easy to... Um, uh, why some boolean? Sorry, I'm trying to finish my sentence, but... Okay, yeah, this part was missing. Um, it, it's, I mean, if your foundation are good, it's easier to fix later. If you, you don't have a good foundation and you say, oh, okay, I will try to fix again later, I mean, it would be more work than if I'm as close as possible to the final mesh and I have a good control because right now I'm working with the Z modeler, I have few vertices to move, a uh, few edges to move, it's easy to refine my model. And then if I have a small artifact, which is just a, f a small detail on this big model, okay, then few brush would be okay. Then if I don't spend my time to do nice bevel and nice uh, split of my mesh, if I want to do that with brushes later, it will require way more control and it can be sometimes way longer. Of course, I can do this shape by other techniques with the brush. I can use something like mesh extract or uh, um, using, um, uh, um, let me think that it should be more rounded on this area. Anyway, uh, I can use mesh extract. I can use a, a lot of different techniques of just masking and, and inflating my polygons, but I may not have this nice sharp, sharp edges. Uh, the same for these things. I have other techniques, but with Boolean, it's, it's, it's okay to do that. Um, if I'm, I'm just hiding everything, Okay, sorry. And building this shape, then just this one. And you remember this, this kind of sharp corner that I didn't like. Same, let me just process my Boolean operation, then Boolean. Okay, my mesh is done. Then not this one, this is this one. You see with uh, everything. And same as before, I can do my Dynamesh. Where are you, Dynamesh? Dynamesh and increasing my resolution. Okay. And I don't know if Trim Dynamic would be the best one, but you see, I could do a Boolean operation of that. But like this, I can work on this model like that using my edge polish brush. Sorry, I'm just doing a, 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 just a small part. And this is what I will do anyway at the end, just to rework some parts. Then now it's more sculpting tools than just uh, uh, modeling tools. And by doing that, it will give a more by hand feeling and not just modeling uh, effect. Then same for this one. I should stop, but you know me, I can't stop. I'm still, I'm low in resolution to be honest, but just to show you an example, it's, I think, okay. You see then why modeling that if you can just sculpt it? 
yeah you don't have the accuracy but at this stage you really don't care for this accuracy because you already created the shape before for this uh, uh, accuracy uh, aspect uh, do we have something which is nicer to display um, that you can work on the edges especially on, on this corner let me just switch back to regular material I'm really lacking of resolution right now for what I'm doing I should have a little bit more polygons but anyway you see what I will do anyway uh, uh, perhaps next week and you can run that a little bit or you can just move if you want which can be just enough like this okay um okay then uh thank you very much for for being with me tonight for um this uh Calorine lightsaber um again i need to finish quite some part of it uh like this one let me hide that uh it will be uh, again more details next time okay i did most of it then uh okay like this okay then um thank you uh edge polish brush uh edge polish brush do we have an edge polish brush no at this stage uh, it's not an edge because I, I i had a lot of resolution uh, if i'm displaying the wireframe you see this is all the polygons i have on my model which is uh 120 000, uh polygons which is already quite a lot um on on this model um i don't see by what you mean by this uh edge polish brush uh anyway um thank you very much uh and uh see you soon i don't know who is the next one to stream after me um blair armitage is streaming uh later today at 7 p.m pacific time which will be character sculpting and I invite watching her presentation. She's a great artist. Um, anyway, then uh, if you want to see the next part of this lightsaber, it will be next Sunday at the same time, starting at 12 um, p.m. PST or 9 uh, p.m. Uh, Central European time, French time. Um, and I will be happy to be with you again. And anyway. Thank you very much, have a nice end of day, a nice Sunday, and see you soon, bye bye.